Hey guys, welcome to another video. In case you are new here, my name is Sujata. I am a student of food science and technology. And today, we are breaking down milk proteins. So let's begin. So, you might have an idea that India tops the list among dairy producing nations. To even think how and why we got here is a story in itself. But as food science students, what we can do is probably make an effort to understand what makes milk such a desirable choice when it comes to protein requirements of the body, especially in infants. If you broadly classify milk proteins, you'll come across two categories, casein and whey protein. So casein is the most prevalent protein you will find in milk and what makes it especially useful is that you can extract it provided you acidify milk. Scientifically speaking, if you bring down the pH of normal milk from say 6.6 to 4.6, casein will precipitate. Now when does a compound precipitate? Let's understand what isoelectric point is. In case you didn't know, not all amino acids are neutral. Some of them possess positive charges, some might possess a negative charge in their native or original state. At the isoelectric point, what happens is this charge nullifies or becomes zero. Now, the resulting salt is least soluble. Now, casein is a collection of several such amino acids and in the native state, it does possess a slight negative charge. Now, when you add lemon to milk, the acid helps in nullifying this negative charge. So what happens is, at the isoelectric point, that is 4.6 pH, casein is no longer soluble and thus it comes out of the solution as a cloudy mixture. This is what I mean by precipitation. You must have noticed this while making paneer at home. So the size of a casein molecule will range anywhere between 80 to 300 nanometers. That also justifies why it is termed a colloid. A colloidal system is a system in which these tiny minute particles are floating in a continuous matrix. Three major components of casein are alpha, beta and kappa. Alpha S1 fraction of casein is calcium sensitive which means if you add a little bit of calcium to it, it will precipitate out. On the other hand, kappa casein is calcium insensitive meaning it will remain unchanged whether you add calcium or not interestingly it is the kappa casein where the cheese enzyme renin works during coagulation now if you have noticed after you precipitate out the paneer the clear greenish liquid which remains behind is called whey and the globular proteins which are present inside this whey are called whey proteins. Now in stark contrast to casein, whey proteins are extremely heat labile and are very easily denatured. What do I mean by denaturation? Simply put, denaturation happens when a protein in the folded well-structured state, say a tertiary structure, transforms into the unfolded state or the primary structure in the presence of heat, acid or likewise. This is exactly what happens when you deep fry eggs on the pan. Important components are beta-lactoglobulin, alpha-lactalbumin and immunoglobulins. Let's see what they are. Beta-lactoglobulin is that fraction of whey proteins which occur as dimers and are bound by these special linkages called sulfhydryl linkages. Could you name an amino acid which possesses sulfhydryl linkages? Comment below. Alpha lactalbumin is interestingly responsible for the synthesis of milk sugar, lactose. Hence, it is an indispensable part of the enzyme lactose synthetase. Immunoglobulins in possess immunity boosting properties and are abundant in cholesterol, which provides passive immunity to the young calf. Other than casein and whey protein, you will come across three other important proteins which are present in very minute quantities. These are lactoferrin, lactoperoxidase and lysozyme. 
That was a quick recap of all the major proteins found in milk. If you benefited out of this, you may consider subscribing to the channel and also